So sometimes you really have to lose a lot to become a winner. And if you've been in the market, especially the crypto market, any length of time, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because right now, I think a lot of us are taking the big L. And to do that, you have to really just grab in there and hold up and see what happens. So today what I want to do is just take a look at uh, how things are going as far as my portfolio, as far as uh, the DCA. And the thing that we had talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was DCAing a very small amount and seeing how it actually did over time. So of course, thank you for uh, showing up everybody on a uh, Sunday. It's very early, depending where you're at. Let's just jump right in. huh? So the first thing is uh, I just wanted to show you, uh, I mean, the tools that we use are very simple. Uh, we use uh, Ben's site most of the time for all that, uh, uh, the DCA simulations, and that's going to be no different this week. But I did want to bring everybody's attention about these, these crypto risk indicators. And there's one that I, I, I thought was quite funny, and Ben's been talking about quite a bit, is this, this social risk. See how it's like the lowest of all of it? And of course, this is just uh, how many people get views and different Twitter accounts, how many people are signing up and how many people are leaving. It's almost at zero. Because if this is an indicator of apathy, or people just capitulating going, I'm just going to give up, <laughs> this is the best one. And uh, I've seen it quite a bit on my channel moving forward. And there's another one I like to see, a macro recession risk. Everything's looking pretty good as far as like a recession, except for the interest rates. Uh, they're almost uh, at one, at a perfect one, which would be, you know, roughly disastrous. But we'll see how it all works out. I think there's a meeting coming up. I don't think they're going to raise rates. I think it's just going to... Uh, just be a pause, and we'll see how it goes. But this is what we're talking about today, which was uh, this piece that I did a couple of weeks ago where we talked about uh, a DCA strategy and how it works. And there was, there was a, a couple of statements from, from subscribers which said, look, I don't know why you even listen to Rob or listen to Guy or listen to Ben because they, they give you no alpha. And they're not here for you. And they've already made their millions. And it has nothing to do with us anymore. These guys are just waiting for their portfolio to go up 2 or 3x so they can dump on us. And uh, I thought, well, shoot, maybe. Well, first of all, if my portfolio went 2 or 3x, that'd be fantastic. But the second I thing I thought about was, well, shoot, maybe I'm not including everybody. So we did as best as we could was to say, well, what if you just invested something small, like $10 a week, dollar cost average, and how would that actually work? And we're going to take a look at the results today because we started on, we started this, this little portfolio and we're taking a look at the things that I personally uh, invest into, which uh, every day or every week, it's the same thing. It's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cosmos, Arbitrum, Chainlink, Polkadot, Near, Polygon, Cardano, Algorand, and Dogecoin. It's a lot of stuff. And I said, well, you know, how would that look like as far as like $10? and to see how it, it, it went over time. And then after I did that, people were, you know, they, they liked the, the response, want to see how it does, but there was a couple of objections which we're going to go over in a bit. Some, one of those being, hey, if I bought 10 bucks a week, you're going to get screwed in fees. And then the other one was, well, you know, if I'm going to transfer my crypto off the exchange, like you say, Rob, and I bought 10 bucks a week, that isn't cost effective, especially with Ethereum. And you're right. Then we're talking about, is it better just to wait? Yeah, how to transfer crypto off exchanges if your region doesn't support that and then you know which cryptos are hot and maybe you should get another shiny object and what do i what do you do when you hit the promised land so if we just take a look at it this is very simple and again if you want to use this tool there is a link in the description uh, for ben's site in the cryptoverse and this tool itself is under tools dca strategies and then it goes here and it's, it's pretty nice because you can just see how things are how things would go uh, moving forward. And you can do this, you can take a look at uh, current or past or how things are. We've done many, many videos over, over the long haul. So, so far, we started this on September 1st. And for whatever reason, every time I put it on the starting date, no no November 1st, because that's three weeks now, because November 1st, the 7th and the 15th. So we've done three weeks, that'd be $30. My math is right, uh, all right. And you can just see that over Bitcoin, over the last three weeks, which one has done the best? Which I think this is kind of funny if you think about it, because you're like, who cares about three weeks? Well, it's all going to come into play. Just wait. 
So as of today, the only two things, wow, excuse me, three things, that have actually kept their value in this boring market, I must say, I mean, for the most part, is near, I put 30 bucks in near and I have $30 left. It didn't go up, didn't go down. Well, that's interesting. Chainlink, didn't go up or down, $30. And Ethereum, $30, everything else sucks. Everything else I, I've lost a little bit. Now, is this gonna, obviously this is not here to crush me, but you're gonna see what happens, what happen, what happens over the next two years and how this will accumulate. But so far I'm down on oh, Doge, Algorand, even, even Bitcoin a little bit, ADA, and of course the loser of the day, the two losers, Solana and Arbitrum, which I thought Arbitrum would do quite well, but hey, over three weeks, what are you gonna do? Dot, Adam, Matic, and ADA. And then just for a little bit of reference here, the starting date I put is August 28, 2023. What if I, again, $10 a week. What if I started in 2019? Obviously, it probably it might be better, right? Up, 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 up. Let's do February 1st. Time in the market is more important than timing the market, but it is somewhat important to take some profits along the way. And when things get overheated, we'll talk about it in a second, you'll see. So people will ask me, they're like, hey, that's really cute, Rob, but I mean, 10 bucks a week, is that really doing anything? Well, at the peak of May of 2021, again, if you would have put 10 bucks a week, 10 bucks a week, in Matic, that have been, you would have, first of all, you would have invested over a little bit over a thousand. And with Matic, maybe 58,000, Cardano would have 31,000, Chainlink, 31,000, ETH, 19. I mean, it's pretty good. And that's only 10 bucks a week. And that's, I think, something that's, that's affordable for most people. And if you can't afford 10 bucks a week, then, uh, you know, this is, this is not the market for you. I'm sorry. So that's just how it is. But yeah. And we can see that over time, looks pretty good. So then, but the big, the big thing is, okay, if we do this and continue to do this, and we do this $10 a week thing, and I'm trying to do this for everybody, I mean, you can do whatever you want to, right? You can put in a hundred bucks a week. And of course, things would go up tremendously. You really wanted to do that. I mean, Doge, you'd have over $2 million. You would have done that back in the day. Even right now, if you'd have done that in 2019, put in a hundred bucks a week, you know, you'd have $322,000 in Matic. Doge, $250,000. If you lump summed, it would be pretty good. $174,000. ETH, you'd have $90,000. And, and you only would have, would have invested $24,000, even if you didn't take any profits along the way. So whatever. So that's that piece. But there's some objections, and I think they're warranted. I know they're warranted. And those objections were pretty simple here. There we go. So, which was this. Look, Rob, if I got to buy 10 bucks a week, and again, that, that could be 10 bucks of just into Bitcoin, or that could be 10 bucks just into Ethereum, or that could be 10 bucks in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, Cardano, Solana, blah, 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 whatever else. But once you get screwed in the fees, yeah, you will. And this is the thing you really have to think about. Because sometimes, like the things that I talk about, I mean, it sounds like a, like a great idea. And then you kind of get into the, to the minutia of it. You're like, hold on, wait, maybe this doesn't really work out for me. And there's ways around that. So let's just see. If you bought $10 of crypto on, I did this on Kraken. I just want to see how much the fees were. And you, you can find this spreadsheet. There's a link in the description. So it's just called $10 a week. It's towards the bottom. So <clears throat> if I bought $10 with a Bitcoin, you know, the fee was 77 cents. That's a lot. I mean, that's a, that's a, a hefty amount. So <clears throat> you might think to yourself, well, maybe that's not a good idea. And you might be right. Or, or maybe you could save up that instead of doing $10 a week of just Bitcoin, maybe you could save that up for the month and buy like $40 worth of it or after two months, $80. The fees aren't gonna be as bad, but they're still gonna be bad. Look at this. I bought 141, actually it's supposed to be 
worth of Bitcoin. And my fee was $8. That's a lot in fees. And if you're just really dollar cost averaging very small amounts. So that's not that great. And then the, the next, and we'll get to the, you know, transferring it into your, your cold wallet. But this is what I do. And you could, you're again, welcome to do whatever you want to. This is why I'm always talking about Coinbase and using Coinbase One. So Coinbase One, it waives the fees at the $10,000. But it's either 30 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month. But Rob, if I'm only paying $10 a week, how's that gonna work out? Because I'm only, I'm only doing $10 a week. Again, you can do whatever you wanna do, right? If you wanna, if you wanna have 7% 7, 7 for every, every single one that you do, you can only afford $10, I guess. Or if you do like me and just say, you know what? I'll just bite the bullet. And instead of, because look, Look at this fee over here. If you're gonna use Coinbase and you bought $10 worth of, worth of, uh, of Bitcoin, you know, it's, a, it's essentially 10%. You're gonna get, the Coinbase fee is a 99 cents. Now, the more you buy, the less it is. So again, over here, 40 bucks, I'm paying $2. And this is very, really cutting the, not cutting the corners, but really, really getting into the, the very, very small details, but some people don't have it. So I'm just telling you that, hey, this is the reality of the situation and uh, these are gonna happen and that's it. So you can do this. And if you do just, uh, if you did like four of these a week, four different transactions at $2, I mean, that's eight bucks right there. So you can do that you can sign up for Coinbase One. I don't have an affiliation with them. I don't have an affiliate link. I don't have a link to Coinbase. So it's up to you to figure out what you want to do and how this will affect you. But I'm just telling you that these are the things that I do and this is why I do those things. And then of course, some people will say, but Rob, the spread and, and I want to go in there and I want to do um, Coinbase Pro, whatever they call it now. And I, I'll do it. Hey, look, if you want to do that every day and go in there and hit that buy button and make sure the spreads aren't there, more power to you. Me, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I got this stuff to do. And I'll just let those go off automatically. And uh, that is how I do things. So that's, we'll take care of that piece. And then the next piece, of course, what if you, how about transferring your crypto? Because Rob, there's these rules you're always talking about. One of those is it's all gone. I mean, you know, you should only invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Don't take leverage and take profits along the way. So when you say no exchanges, if I buy $10 a week of Bitcoin, that means I have to right away take it off of the exchange. Or if I buy $10 worth of Ethereum, I have to right away take it off that exchange. It'll be nice. But the problem is, is fees again. So fees for Ethereum on Kraken, look at this. Look at this. If you're gonna, if you're gonna take Ethereum off of Kraken, let's say it's a stable coin, USDC, the minimum you have to take off is sixteen dollars, and the fee is eight. <laughs> Arbitrum, four and two, Polygon, two and one, Solana. This is all stable coins, two and one, and and Tron, and so on and so forth. Now, even if it was just because you're gonna have to pay a network fee. And we know that gas fees for Ethereum are pretty high. So if you're buying $10 over Ethereum, probably not a good idea to take it off right away. The thing that I was trying to convey here in the message of don't leave it on exchanges is don't do something crazy like what we used to do, which was leave it on Voyager, leave it on Excelsius, or Excelsius, Celsius, leave it on FTX, leave it on BlockFi, because, you know, we trust them. Whew. Is to take it off as soon as you possibly can. So if you're buying $10 per week and that's all you're buying, maybe you wait a full month. If you lose 40 bucks, is that gonna crush you? Might, I don't know you. But what would crush you is if you put your entire life savings in, like a lot of people did with Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, and FTX, and it's all gone. So it'll be great if you could take it all off, but it doesn't mean it's gonna always happen. So that'll take care of objection number, number two. And then number three, this is a good question. Wouldn't it just be better to wait? 
Because why am I dollar cost? Why am I dollar cost averaging all this time? It just seems like everything's are going is going down. Let me even let me show you even more even more pain of dollar cost averaging. Are you ready? Great. So I just showed you a really positive piece. And I'm showing you all these things because I want you to know that it is normal to not be up all the time and not have this constant pressure of your portfolio must be profitable and it can only be down only so many times. That's dumb. It's gonna be, it's gonna hurt for a while. It's just like a business. You don't open up a profitable business from day one. It takes a while to recoup all the expenses that you put into it, all the time and effort to actually turn a company profitable. I know I've done a couple of them and it sucks. And it's just a grind. So when I showed you this, this 2019, that's cool, but let's take a look at Rob personally. <coughs> Sorry about this cough. I hope it goes away. I'm doing pretty good so far. So as you may know, I started a dollar cost average eh, around here, February 1st, 2022. And I thought, well, I took some good profits. I mean, 2017, when I got into it, I didn't take any. A moron. And then, uh, in 2018, I just watched everything crash and I wrote all the way up, wrote it all the way down and I learned my lesson. And then in 2021, I sold a good amount, should have sold more, but did a lot better than 20, my, first, my first cycle. And this next cycle, I expect to do even better. And that's just how things usually work. So what did I do? Well, I started dollar cost average in 2022. Could I have waited? Yeah, potentially. And of course, hindsight is 2020, right? So let's just take a look. Let's say that I spent, and this is just hypothetical. Let's do it even better. Let's say it's a hundred bucks a day on Bitcoin and how that would look like a day. And if I'm looking at starting on dollar cost averaging on February 1st, 2022, remember in November, 2021 was, was the peak. So how do we do? Great question. Not too hot. So going here, if you're dollar cost averaging, you're essentially, a, yeah, you're essentially, there we go, a sinking ship for quite some time. Actually, if you come over here, it's not too bad. So February, you invested 700 and you're actually up. You're actually doing pretty good in February. Then across this continuum, yeah, I'm actually doing pretty, not too bad. But you can see that over time you start to slip and you're bleeding. Now there's this thing called lump sum. I don't know if you have like 60,000 just to stick into, into Bitcoin right away. But if you did, you'd be up doing pretty well in the bear. And then April 5th, 2022. Gosh, you know, this is, this is much better than I thought it was going to be. So four months, doing pretty good. Five months, now I'm starting to lose. Going into May of 2022, oh yeah. This is when people still had hope. And now look, we're investing 10,000, we're all underwater. I mean, Adam, we're about half. May 19, May 27, now you can see how I'm, where I am really taking a hit here. And I'm just going down. And it was around this time, when I started to do this thing called micro DCing, and I changed my strategy and I won't do that again. Actually, it was over here towards the lower part. And I was actually dollar cost average. Instead of 100 bucks, I'd put in like 60 bucks or whatever it was. And you can just see here that I'm still massively underwater. I invested 20,000 in Solana, 12,000, Algo, 12,000, Ada, 14,000 roughly. And you can just see it's all over the place. It's awful. And it hurts. I don't even look at my portfolio anymore. Because I'm like, what's the point? I know it sucks. I know it's down. So again, and then here would be, I think, some of the, some of the worst parts. November 10th, 2022. Yeah. I invested, we'll say 28000 And that's just for Bitcoin, mind you. But you're down on Matic. 
I mean, four grand. I mean, look at Solana. Jeez, near 11,000. You, you lost a third. Well, a little more than a half. So just when you take a look at this, just realize that in these bear markets, this is how it is. And it just sucks and it's awful. And should you have waited? Should I have waited? Yeah, I probably should have waited a little bit <laughs> instead of going all the way in. But that's just how it is. I think in the next cycle, maybe I'll just sit out the very first year after I blow off top and do nothing. But um, can't do much about that now. As time goes on, I'll recoup those losses. I mean, it's usually what happens. Once we have blow off tops, it's huge blow off tops. So not too concerned about it. And it doesn't really bother me because I've done this for years now. But I think for you being here, and if you're new to this, if you're a class of 2021, just know it's just like, well, that's just kind of how it is. And uh, I mean, if you're investing in traditional markets, S&P 500, NASDAQ, those types of things, I mean, anything under five years, anything under a decade, I mean, it's not, usually people are a lot more patient as opposed to the crypto market. So that would answer that question. Should you have waited? Yeah, maybe could have waited a little more, but too late now. And here we are, I'll make it up. And it's not so much a big deal. Ask Michael Saylor how he feels about it. I don't think he really cares too much either. Okay, and then number four, uh, I don't know how to transfer my crypto off exchanges. Don't worry, this is a judgment-free zone. I won't judge you for that. Because at some point, I didn't know either. And it seemed like, like at some point, I didn't know how to send an email. At some point, we didn't know how to get on the internet. At some point, we didn't know how to you know, use a nano ledger, just how it goes, right? Everything has to happen. So I'm going to make this super simple. There's this website, and it's free. It's 100% free. And it'll always be free. And it's called Dan Teaches Crypto. And there's a link in the description. It's like one of the first links. And I made this free so you don't get screwed over. And I make it as simple as I possibly can. And the only, way, the only thing I want from you is your email. And not so I can spam you, but so I can alert you when I upload something new, which I gotta tell you these days, it's quite rare. So let's log in. And instead of you having to hunt for everything all around YouTube, I made it very, very, very simple, as best as possible. So you, it breaks up into modules. Safety, and I break it down here. What's a crypto wallet? It's seven minutes long. Tangent wallet, cold storage. What's a public private key? Setting up your nano ledger, setting up your ledger live app, transferring crypto from exchange to wallet, delete and restore it, anything you wanna know. And then all those things I just talked about, I, I condensed here in this video, which I think is the best one I've done uh, for Tangent. You know what Tangent is? It's great. It's just, they're just cards. They have the private keys within them. You don't have to write down mnemonic phrases. Link in the description. So if you don't know, it's no big deal. Just figure it out, watch these videos, and I'll show you how to do it. And why do that? Well, I'll give you four reasons. Voyager, Celsius, FTX, BlockFi. There you go, there's your four reasons. Objection number five. My region and centralized exchange doesn't support automatic DC options. Now with this one, I have, uh, some people have said that, look, I can't automatically DCA. Look, automatic dollar cost averaging is what is on available on Kraken. It's what's available on, sell, on excuse me, Coinbase. And it works if it's in your region and your specific centralized exchange doesn't support automatic dollar cost averaging, look someplace else. So a lot of places are out there, crypto.com, is available to you. I don't care if you're in parts of Europe, I don't care if you're in Southeast Asia, I don't even parts, uh, parts of Africa, Middle East. Crypto.com, from what I understand, is available in most of the areas, if not Binance, and they both do it. So if it doesn't support it, you got two options. First of all, just keep buying those, if you want to, dollar cost uh, average options and do it manually, or sign up for another exchange that actually does it. I don't know about the buy bits and the bit goes and the, whatever else is out there that, that people use. I can't keep track of all of them. Just find the one that works. Those are the ones I know that work. Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, Crypto.com, and a host of others. All right. Then, number six. This is one of my favorite ones. But these cryptos aren't hot right now, Rob. 
why can't I YOLO into Pepe coin or whatever it is, right? And I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to put Pepe coin. I'm going to take a coin that's, uh, I just talked about yesterday, ton. So when we talk about what's hot, right, what's hot right now, I get it. You look at these tokens, you're like, well, this sucks. I don't want to sit around like Rob did for two years and, and make millions of dollars. That's boring. <laughs> Jokes aside, it doesn't matter. So Warren Buffett, I know people don't, some people don't like him, but he's a pretty decent investor. I think people could agree. You know, he doesn't make his money by, by scalping, by day trading. None of the people that make the most money in the world do that. They're not big traders. They're buying holders. And this is a piece from Bankrate. Here's Warren Buffett has even said it. He said, All, out of the hundreds of different business decisions that we've made, it's only been between five and 11 that have really sh stood out. And because of the fact that I stood with them for the longest time is why Berkshire Hathaway did so well. Look at this. Here's his top five and how long he held them. Coke, Coca-Cola. You ever heard of it? It's delicious. It's not good for you, but man, it tastes good with, uh, with pizza. And he's, him and his company has been holding it for 35 years. The cost was $1.3 billion. The market value is now $24.8 billion. That's how you hold. American Express, this is, one, this is one that my brother got into, and he always rubs my face into it when I talk about Bitcoin. So good for you, Eric. Jerk. <laughs> he held this for 30 years. Cost is 1.3 billion, the market value is 25 billion. Moody's, Moody's credit rating business, 23 years. Got it for 248 million, worth seven and a half billion. Apple, which is one of their, their shortest holds, seven years, 30 to 35 billion, the market value is 151 billion. And global life insurance, they don't even know how much they cost them, but they've been, they've been holding it for 23 years, and the market value is almost $700 million. So just take it from that. And then, Again, if we're talking about just a short time frame, Buffett, just as far as like last year, this is a snippet in time, you have to understand. He makes all his money from just 11 stocks. All the other ones that's, that's in their portfolio, and they hold on for quite some time, but these are the ones that so far, as far as like, this was in November 2022, talked about how only 22% of Warren Buffett, the best investor, that humanity has ever known, apparently, only 22% of his stocks are up. And he would have done better just investing in the S&P 500, which was 27% up for that year or that, that point. So when we talk about the next shiny thing, we're like, oh, that's, but it's going to be this thing. And I should jump into that thing and jump in that. Trust me, I did that. It didn't work. And we talked about this yesterday. And I was just talking about the market itself. And I talked about TonCoin, which is... I guess there's now a collaboration between TonCoin and Telegram, which is what it was designed to do. It gives you access into the ecosystem and the wallet itself. And people are very excited about it, and that's great. But it's done bonkers lately. In the last 24 hours, it's gone up 2%. Seven days, it's been up 30%. 14, 23, 30 days, 76, and one year, 42%. In a crappy bear market, I might add. So that's awesome, Rob. I should get into that. Wait. Just wait, this is why. And this is the thing that I learned when I went into Korean blockchain week. And I met a bunch of people who were market makers and essentially manipulators. Gary, if you're listening, shut your volume off. There's massive manipulation in this, in this market. And they told me exactly how they did it. And they told me what they did with, with two specific cryptos and why they went so bonkers crazy. And the reason was, is because they owned them all. There's this great website. It's called Into the Block. I don't have an affiliate link or a link or anything of that. You can find it. Do a Google search. And uh, it's a paid service, but uh, I like to use it. And you can see ownership. The ownership. They break it down between whales, investors, and retail. And whales are just people that have just a massive amount. You know that there's nine wallets that owns 76% of TonCoin? Nine. Nine. Investors, there's 41. Let's do some quick math. 50 wallets 
owned the vast majority of this. And I can't guarantee anything, but I can tell you the things that those, the market makers told me and the people that were doing these things behind the scenes for these other two cryptos, it's the same thing. Wash, rinse, repeat. And that's what's going on right now. So if you want to get into that, have fun. That's not for me. And uh, that's the danger of getting involved into the next shiny object. And then the last objection, which is when do I sell and what the heck do I do with it? Because I mean, and Sailor's got a good point about like, well, if you sell Bitcoin, what are you gonna do then? So what are you gonna put in a fiat as it gets inflated away? What are you gonna put into real estate as that starts to shift beneath your feet and it goes away? You're gonna put it into gold? And is that really gonna appreciate? What are you gonna do with it? It's a good question. So as far as like, when do I sell and what do I sell and all that stuff? Let's just start with the when do I sell. There's this website, sorry, there's a website and uh, there's a video I'm always talking about. And you go to module three investing. And this is a good one, the valuable lessons. I even included the sailor there. Dynamic DCA, have a plan, some indicators. When and why I'm selling 80% of all my crypto what I'm doing. Watch that video, those are the indicators. And the next question is, what do you do with it? The thing is, is like, it's whatever you want to do. You know, if you want to sit on cash, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, just know it's going to inflate away, right? Do you have all your, I mean, the, the most basic thing, do you have your, your extremely high credit card debt wiped out? Do you have debt for your other family members wiped out? And if it's like 23, 30% or higher, which does happen maybe you look into that first but for me i don't have much debt i have debt not much debt i just kind of share things around so when i'm looking at it for me it's going to be a big chunk in cash then stables i'm going to keep about five percent in my in my like in dgen plays i have this thing called masterworks where i invested into fractionalized shares of artwork I don't talk about it too much anymore because people got ticked off about it because they're like, it's a scam and da, da, da. One of my paintings just sold. And the uh, results were palpable, so whatever. Land and real estate, the businesses, staking, IRA, and stocks. And I kind of keep into that and I kind of rotate them around. This game for me never stops. Doesn't mean it doesn't have to be for you. You... If you want to, because I'm not a financial advisor, you can do whatever you want to. You can put this all in the cash, move to Miami Beach, Florida, play golf all day. Very boring life, I mean, unless you're really into golf. Or you could put in something else, or you can put in other businesses, or you can just say, you know what, I'm not gonna sell anything. But for me, this is what I do. So it's not just about selling and sitting on cash for me, because the cash always has to go to work for you. The cash just can't sit there. You can hang on to it for a bit and wait for different opportunities to arise. And the best things for those are when we hit recessions and things like that, or massive, massive bear markets like, like this. But it cannot stay there forever because you have to make money work for you. And that's just what I like to do. So that's it. And then uh, lastly, oh, I want to say thanks, everybody. This was nice. So... Oh, well, there's two things. First of all, if anybody, anybody wants to know my Bitcoin price prediction, I put that in uh, Twitter. This has been uh, massive research and cost analysis. Uh, Music 84 Able asked me, hey, Rob, what's your maximum Bitcoin price prediction for the next bull run? And what price will you be looking to sell at? I said $19 billion per Bitcoin, $19 billion. As you may know, I think predictions are worthless. So if you ever ask me that question again here, I will give you the most ridiculous answer. And also I wanna thank everybody for the well wishes. So fortunately my other dog passed, Chloe, 15 years, 15 years. And uh, you know, the outpouring was very, very touching. From Jordan, Dr. Jabby, Sharktoshi, 
DJ Crypto, Guy, Aaron Bennett, Aaron, Classy Games, Mickey from uh, World Mobile, Simon Dixon, FD White, Lady Crypto, Tesla was there. And as it goes, Neem, Des, Bull in a bear market, he's looking at Oleg from Sweat Economy. So everybody, thanks uh, for the well wishes. But uh, these things happen. And uh, you just have to, Brian, Matt and Andrea, you have to roll with the punches and uh, go from there. That's it, everybody. So look, I know that went a little bit long, but uh, I'm trying to kind of explain the whole process to everybody because I don't want to keep getting the same questions. So I'll probably just put this video Maybe I'll put this into Dan Teaches Crypto. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That concludes everything for uh, the news and the DCA and all that stuff. And again, DCA, it's, it's painful. Let's just be honest. But you don't have to make it so painful. Just know that bear markets don't last forever. And there's a bull market right around the corner. So that's it.